الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله Islam and this is geared toward the new Muslim to gain an understanding of what the Muslim believes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as believers in Allah we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one this is called Tawheed Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala monotheism and the scholars of Islam in looking at the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have abstracted and divided this concept of monotheism and Tawheed into three categories. The first category being Tawheed Rububiyyah, the Lordship of Allah, meaning that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created all of this. alone, without partners. And he created us, mankind, and the jinn, for the purpose of worshiping him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem, in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and the jinn, except for the purpose of worshiping me. One of the things we believe as believers also as we see these are caves, as you can see here, that in caves and places like this, also the jinn, they inhabit these places. So you have to be cautious. And the jinn referring to spirits, so to speak, or the spirit world. So Allah created us and the jinn for the purpose of worshiping Him. And that means Allah is the only creator, the Lord, the sustainer, he provides for us, and He is not in need of us. The second category, Habatifillah, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we call, refer to Tawheed al-Ibadah, or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, meaning that all worship, supplication, prayer, fasting, hajj, jihad, feasibilillah, all of these things are for the sake of Allah. They're all there to bring us closer to Allah and to fulfill His wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, His divine will. It's what Allah wants from us to worship Him and Him alone, those other things are means. They're means, they are ibadah, and they're means to bring us closer to Allah. And ibadah, worship, ahabatifillah, it's inward, it's inside, and it's outward. Things like trusting in Allah, this is something inward. You can't measure it by looking at someone that they trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessarily. But rather, you know this uh, the person themselves, this is an act of ibadah internally. The third category is Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat, meaning that Allah has divine names and attributes. We call upon Him by those names and attributes, and His, his uh, attributes are unique to Him. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. He's the most beneficent, the most merciful. The most merciful, meaning perhaps we have mercy. Yes, we, we have mercy in the creation. But our mercy is unlike Allah's mercy. Allah says in the Quran, There is nothing like Him, and He is the all-hearing and all-seeing. Allah hears all things, He sees all things, Allah affirmed this for Himself. Those are attributes, divine attributes, because He is the all-hearing, He is the all-seeing, whereas I can only see as far as I can see. You can only see with what we pan with the camera. As you can see, there's date palms, 
There are many things, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see the ants that inhabit that, those date palm gardens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears everything that's going on. Because He created it, and He is the all-hearer and the all-seer. So therefore, these are divine sifat, divine characteristics, and we do not share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Ar-Razak, the provider. Whereas we may provide for our family, we contain attributes, but they're unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ours are, have shortcomings. Allah is perfect and complete. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.